So we have one last thing that we want to share uh, with these improper intervals. And, you know, what we'll see is that sometimes we're actually not able to take the integral of the function that's inside of our improper integral. And that happens more often um, than we would like. There's a lot of things that we can't take the integral of or we can't take the integral of them easily. So one of the tools that we have kind of in our, our toolbox to help us figure out if an improper integral converges to a number or diverges is the comparison test. So what we're going to be looking at is functions f of x and g of x. And here's a picture that I stole from our OpenStax textbook. And g of x is greater than or equal to f of x for the interval. And let's make my handwriting a little bit better. Our interval of interest. I said make our handwriting better, and then I just really did not <laughs> full interval. All right, our interval of interest. So g of x is always greater than f of x. So the comparison test, I, again, I grabbed this from our textbook. So if we've got, you know, we're looking as we go to positive infinity of f of x. So that's our lower function there. And we get that it diverges. It goes to infinity. So it diverges. Then g of x, which is above that function is also going to diverge. So this will tell us that, you know, maybe we've got some function that we know is always below g of x, and that's something we can actually figure out what the integral is. We can get that closed formula and we can look at the limit. And if we know that that's going to diverge because its area is smaller, the one, the function that's above it is of course going to have an area that also diverges. So the second part of this says, okay, well, instead, say you're looking at g of x. Say we're looking at this function that's above f of x, and g of x converges. So g of x has a bigger area than f of x. It converges to a function, or it converges to a number. Then f of x also is going to have to converge to a number. And that number it converges to is going to have to be less than or equal to the one that that function is above it converges to. So how we might use this is let's take a look at a function like x over x cubed plus 1 going from 1 to infinity. And let's see, did I get a graph on here? No, I didn't. That's all right. <laughs> we, can, we can bear with it that I didn't get the graph put on here. x over x cubed plus 1. This is less than or equal to x over x cubed. So this one, we have to think about this for a second of why this would be true. This is true because this function here has a larger denominator. than our other function over here, it's bigger than that, that denominator by one. So for example, we be, might be looking at two over nine if x was two, and that is two ninths is less than or equal to two eighths, which two eighths is a fourth, two ninths, two ninths is less than a fourth. And again, you can look at the decimals. This is two repeating, this is 0.25. Two repeating is less than 0.25. So if we add one to our denominator, we're gonna get a smaller fraction. So this is a statement that's always true for any x values particularly ones that are from 1 to infinity, because we're just looking at positive numbers. So what we can do is we can compare this function right here with this function, x over x cubed, or 1 over x squared, and compare the integrals. So we've got one that sits up above it, you know, right like here, that our 1 over x squared would be our g of x, and then our x over x cubed plus 1 would be our f of x. And what we're hoping to show is that our upper function converges, because then we would know that our lower function also converges. So if you remember, we actually found the integral of 1 over x squared dx in our very first video, and we got that this was 1. So because this integral converges and 1 over x squared is greater than or equal to x over x cubed plus 1, then 
the integral uh, from 1 to infinity of x over x cubed plus 1 also converges. Now, sadly, it doesn't tell us what it converges to. It just tells us that it converges. So now we could, if we wanted to, maybe spend some more time figuring out what this integral might be. We're not going to do that right now, but we could. Um, right now, all we want to know is, does it converge or not? Yes, it does. So we're, we're happy there.